Hi everyone, I'm JD from Willow Band Journals and I'm here with my Daphne's Diary that I'm using for the List Journal course, which is a free course on my channel. And I am doing a very laid back, go at your own pace course. And here is the prompt list. It's available now over on YouTube on the community page. I just found out that you can actually add images there. So anytime there's like a free printable or a prompt list, I can now put it there. Uh, but it's also on the Willow Bound Journal's Facebook group page, on my Patreon and my Instagram. So you should be able to find it anywhere now. <laughs> um, and yeah, I have just been ticking off the ones that are inspiring me and it's been really, really fun. So I did two pages off camera because they were just lists. I didn't decorate the page or anything. I literally just used the page from the Daphne's Diary magazine, my favorite magazine. And, you know, this was my bucket list and this one just had a list on this side. So I was like, perfect. I can just write my lists here. And I just used the amount of space there as to how much I wrote. Um, Cause usually I do like top five for my lists, but this time I just kept on going. Um, I ended up doing this page first, even though this is day nine and day 10, I should have actually swapped that over. So yeah, on my bucket list, these are just things that most of them, they're not really anything big. They're not life goals. If they don't, they don't happen, I'm not going to be too fussed about it. These are just fun things to think about, dream about. Um, but who knows if they'll ever happen. Uh, but one of them is to swim under a waterfall and to walk behind one. That would be really cool. Um, to watch and photograph a sunset and the following sunrise and do an all-nighter. I think that would be so, so fun to find f find a friend or a group of friends who would do that with me and we would take like a picnic dinner and snacks and just talk all night and have deep and meaningfuls and laugh and then, yeah, photograph the following sunrise, um, travel overseas, just random places that I would like to go to if I ever do go overseas. <laughs> New Zealand, I would love to go to Hobbiton. That one is actually um, like on my list <laughs> of things I would actually really like to do. Like some of these, if they don't happen, I'm not too fast. And, and this one, if it doesn't happen as well, you know, I'm not going to be heartbroken, but that would be really, really cool to do, <laughs> to go to Hobbiton. I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. I want to get the... um the even star brooch and the um the pendant and the leaf brooch that the fellowship wears so I can be part of the fellowship <laughs> um Bali I want to get my hair done with the braids and the beads when I was at primary school there was the school exchange and all oh, people would go to Bali just for the trip and they would always come back with their hair and braids and the beads and I love the sound that they made like the rustling noise and I was like, oh, I'd love to get my hair like that done, hair done like that, if I can speak. Vietnam, Italy, Spain, Greece, US, um, which brings me to the next one. I have a like a dream to go to Portland, Oregon for a year. Again, I don't know if I would ever do this, but I would love to go to cafes and write in cafes and go to bookshops and read and talk to intellectual people and have challenging conversations and... Uh, that would be so fun to go there for a year and write a memoir um, and journal about my trip and everything. Work in a bookshop. That one, I would I'd really love to do that one. Um, and I would love to open my own bookshop, a secondhand one. Um, and a big dreaming, really big year. Again, <laughs> probably never going to happen, but to open like a, a retreat, a creative retreat where there would be a bookshop there would be a cafe, there would be a pretty garden that people could write in and create in and paint in. There would be little study nooks for people to write in if they want solitude. There would be discussion rooms if they want to talk about creativity um, and do group courses and things. And just like a creative retreat place, I don't know, a catch-all. There might be a dance studio in one area, a painter's studio in another, and a library in another. Oh, Anyway, <laughs> one day maybe, <laughs> probably not. Uh, get a black female cat called Bagheera. Um, so Bagheera coming from the Jungle Book, I think it means panther um, because the panther's named Bagheera. 
and I was taking to calling Keanu my black cat Bagheera as a nickname and I liked it so much that I was like yeah I would love to get a black cat a female cat and call it Bagheera be featured in Daphne's diary once a year I email Daphne's diary with photos of how I use the magazine and uh, one day I would love to be featured in their mail section um, this one is actually on my big like list of things I definitely want to happen like yellows they don't have to definitely happen but this one I want to publish my books <laughs> my biggest dream is to be a writer and you know I, I can already call myself a writer but to be an established sort of author I suppose and I've got so many books I want to write. I want to do a poetry one, a faith one, one about footy and sport and what it teaches me about faith, a mental health one. And yeah, so many. And then this last one here, make someone's dream come true. <laughs> and over here, let's go to my wish list. Again, these are just a lot of the things on my bucket list and wish list. They're trivial. They're just frivolous, fun things to think and dream about. If they don't happen, you know <laughs> I'm not going to be heartbroken but one of my biggest ones that I've been thinking about over the last few years just in terms of like decorating my space one day I'd love to get my own writer's creative studio that is like a, a tiny house rum one bedroom place that can be my little creative place to live um, and then I could deck it out however I wanted with a chandelier in the middle of the room and crystal doorknobs and all the doors not really real crystal but just glass prism glass or whatever um and bookcases and fairy lights and a little reading nook and a writing desk and uh that would be a wonderful dream <laughs> um, a book notes to myself by Hugh Prather Sabrina Ward Harrison the my course teacher for the book course I'm doing introduced me to this book and as soon as I read the free sample on Amazon I was like this book was made for me like oh my goodness um so that's the book I'm going to get myself for my birthday um my birthday is in a week <laughs> so it's catching up a couple of it's September it's so so crazy and yeah I always get myself every year a birthday and Christmas present because that allows me to um you know get something for myself without feeling guilty because <laughs> so, I've wanted this book for a while now and even though it's only $20 I'm like oh but I don't need it so I, I won't get it so I'm like I'll get it for my birthday and that way I won't I won't feel guilty about getting it for my birthday so I'm super excited in one week I will be getting that book yay um a blue typewriter with white keys this has been on my wish list for years now um I just think typewriters are wonderful. I would love to have a typewriter collection. As a writer, they're just everything. <laughs> um, I got a typewriter this year, though, from a vintage place. And it's what I'm using to type my book up. If it's not handwritten, the pages are typewritten. Um, and so I don't really need to get a typewriter since this one is doing the job just fine. Excuse me, but one day I would love to get this to go with my decor if that ever happens <laughs> um a vintage ledger journal from Lorna Taylor so <laughs> I I haven't been buying journals for quite a while now ever since I moved and you know downsized and decluttered I had gone on a journal buying frenzy at one stage when I got into junk journals and discovered them and I had to give most of them up well, I didn't have to but I did um, give a lot of them away because I had so many blank journals that I wasn't using and I couldn't justify keeping these journals that were just going to sit on my shelf going unused so I gave them away um, not all of them some of my absolute favorites I kept but a lot of them I did um, and so I realized well I'm not gonna I won't buy journals from other people or make myself a journal until I use the ones already on my shelf that are blank and just this year I have started making myself more journals um, but I haven't yet bought any journals from other people and if I do I'm going to be way more selective than I was before um, and at the moment there's really only like three people I would buy a journal from uh, you know, the, the, the journalers that have meant a lot to me on my journey who have made a, such an impact and inspired me so much to have something of theirs 
would make me feel you know connected to them and anyway just their style is something I love and, and inspired by so Wilna Taylor her ledger journals her vintage ledger and antique journals they're so amazing every time I just put the video on replay I'm like I love this so much love it love it love it so much and down here I've got one from Amity Bloom I would love to get a handmade journal from her too um, but you know I'm not too fast again because I've got I've bought packs from her in the past to make my own journal from her her packs uh, but still it'll be a dream to actually have one that she's handmade herself I also have Johanna Clough I uh, like as a the, as a third person I'd get a journal from but because she so kindly sent me one that she'd made um, I feel like you know I've got one from her I own a journal from her and I've got that connection now so for me, physical items make me feel very connected. <laughs> um, I, you know, my gallery wall and the way I decor, like it's, this is the way that I express myself. This is the way that I communicate. This is my language is through the things that I make and keep and the things that I use to decorate. It all has meaning to me. Anyway, so she would be on the list here, except I feel like I already have one of her journals. So um, yeah, I... It's not as high a priority. <laughs> um, an artwork from Sabrina Ward Harrison and prints from the Cottage Fairy. Again, the Cottage Fairy and Sabrina Ward Harrison, they are two people who really inspire me and have had a, had a huge impact on my journey. And so again, I just naturally then want to have something physical from them that they have made. So a painting from Sabrina or she does words like phrases that she does in ink that I would love to just get that and frame it and put on my wall just have something from her you know um, and something from the cottage fairy which I actually did buy so part of my birthday present to myself is this cat print that she does she's a watercolorist and it reminds me of Keanu I'm going to put it on my gallery wall and it's going to stay there forever that kind of thing and uh, so yeah this print it was only it was like less than $20 so super affordable and I'm hoping it arrives by the time of my birthday because it's coming from the US so I thought I would purchase it a month in advance, so hopefully it would get to me by my birthday. <laughs> um, and so that was actually doable. I was like, oh, I can actually get that um, and tick that off. But yeah, I'd love to get more and support her even more and get more prints from her. I wonder if she would do custom orders and do like a Willow Princess print for me. But anyway, um, she also has these really cool butterfly wing earrings. Um, I really want to email her and ask where she got them from because they're so pretty. Um, other books that I would love to get, Messy Thrilling, Th if I can speak, Messy Thrilling Life and The Stories Happening by Sabrina Ward Harrison. I've already got her first three books, I believe it is. Um, or I've got three of her books and she's got five in total. And so, you know, as an artist and author who I admire so much, I would love to get her other two books. These ones, though, I would have got them for my birthday this year, except they're just super expensive, like really, really expensive. And um, postage from overseas is like really expensive. So I just keep looking out for for these books. And when I find a reasonable price, if hopefully when, when I find a reasonable price, I will get those two books for myself um and lego disney castle and treehouse okay so i got this very first kit this year this was a holiday gift to myself <laughs> uh, see how i justify things um it was ten dollars and um a souvenir for my holiday that i had with my sister and nephew because my nephew loves lego and each time we have a holiday um, he does Lego and um, I, I'd never done one by myself like with him or anything and I thought I'd get this one for me for the holiday and it's Beauty Sparkle so when I was a kid I would imagine that I was a princess and I had a unicorn with a rainbow mane and tail and her name was Beauty Sparkle so this here is Beauty Sparkle she has a name <laughs> and this is part of me also claiming my willow princess identity <laughs> and the start of my lego collection so i i um yeah it was pretty much my nephew who got me into lego <laughs> um but i love organizing it that's my favorite like making it's fun but i also love organizing it so the first thing i do when i tip out the lego is organize them into all their different pieces so fun so fun and when you have a giant kit it can take like 
forever just doing that like a whole day just doing that part but it's so fun anyway so I researched different kits and the Disney castle is my ultimate like I don't know if I'll ever get it because <laughs> again super expensive but I that's my ultimate one because I grew up with Disney it's meaningful to me I, I'm a Disney princess and one day I even just want to print actually I should put that on the wish list a print of the Disney castle like from Etsy I just want to get like a print or a photo and put that on my gallery wall just because that again you know castles palaces crowns tiaras gowns that's that's me I'm the willow princess so I want to put a castle on my wall and the Disney castle is what I want to put there because of all that symbolism and the meaning behind it but I also would love to get the Disney castle with the light kit that would be amazing so that's like very far in the future very 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 far in the future if ever and then the tree house and this one is just kind of random um it has no sentimental meaningful value to it at all it's literally just of all the lego kits that my nephew has done this is the only one that i've seen that i thought i want that one <laughs> it's amazing i love all the little details and all the little rooms and it, it's just magical and maybe it does have some connection because you know treehouse fairy princess you want to live in a treehouse that kind of vibe and how the willow i would climb its branches and that's that was my home the willow the willow tree imagine a willow tree house oh my goodness okay anyway so, so and, and i had a tree house when i was a kid growing up we had a tree house and i loved it, it was my favorite area in the yard besides the willow in in the fern garden and um Okay, maybe the more I'm talking about this, the more I'm understanding why I love the treehouse <laughs> Lego kit so much. Anyway, so I would love that one too. Totally random, totally frivolous. And finally, a vintage French bundle. I mean, I would love to get a million vintage French bundles. Uh, but I actually, after I wrote this list, I finally committed. So there's something about writing down a list that makes you actually take action. If it's all just in your head and you're thinking about it, it's just wishful thinking. You never act on it. But for me, actually writing it down makes me go, oh, this is actually meaningful to me, or maybe it's not, and I can actually cross that off. Or maybe it is actually speaking to me so much that I want to put this into action. So I finally got a vintage French bundle. And the reason why, it's not just because it's on my wish list, but I need more reasons than just being on my wish list to get something. <laughs> um, it's because I have got 12 vintage French journals that I have got made like the covers are all done the coffee dyed pages are all done the um some of the ephemera is all done they're ready to go i just need the vintage french papers the feature pages and to make more vintage french ephemera for them so they've been sitting there for over a year and i don't want them to sit there any longer so I finally was like, my two rules for purchasing supplies for journal making is if I'm replacing an item or if I need it to make my journals. And so finally I realized I actually do need this supply to make these journals. There are 12 of them and they're just sitting there. They've been sitting there for a year. <laughs> I'm looking at them right now. They're all ready to go to be made. Everything's all, like all the pages are in there. All, all the vellum, all the things I cut up, all the coffee dye pages, they're all cut up and prepared, ready to go. I just need the feature pages. And because um, I've been using, I didn't have enough supplies anyway, like 12 journals is a lot. You need quite a lot of vintage eph ephemera and pages to go in there. And because I'm about using the things, um, I've been using the vintage French supplies that I did have in the vintage French journals that I've made so far this year. And I'm just like, okay, well, I've almost used all of it now. And so now I'm both replacing an item then and purchasing something that is needed to make the journal. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to get a vintage French bundle and I'm waiting for that. I'm so excited to get that in the mail and so excited to finally finish these vintage French journals. These are, these are one of my biggest collection, if not my biggest. I don't think I've ever done 12 journals all in one go before. <laughs> I'm a bit daunted, a bit daunted, but like I said, it's all ready to go. All the, all, all the, all the other pages are cut up and they're all done. They're all folded. Um, so I'm really excited. These, you know, got, you know, vintage French is like my favorite theme of journal to make. So this is like my big collection. They're fabric cover journals. They're multi-signature journals. I'm, I'm super excited. And yeah, I just got to wait for this to arrive, this package. I'm trying to be patient. And it's probably gonna take forever because it's from France. 
Um, but yeah, I am excited to finally get these journals and make these journals and show them to you. So those are my lists for bucket list and wish list. I hope you have fun with those prompts yourself and maybe you will, you'll tick off something on your bucket list or you'll tick off something on your wish list because you matter and you don't have to justify it to anyone. You can do it just because you're you and it speaks to your heart and makes you come alive and <laughs> I give you permission. <laughs> so have fun with your journaling and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. A big thank you to my beautiful patrons who supported me in August. Thank you so much for allowing me to create full time and share videos daily. If you would like to become a patron in September, the link is down below in the description box and that's where you get access to extra videos, sneak peeks of all my creations and first access to them. Um, you get the journal making series. I do a journal making series each month over there and printables for the ruby tier and higher and mail sent to you for the higher tiers. There's also access to the intentional life course and the Marco Polo group if you're interested in that tier. And yeah, check out my journaling courses down below as well. They are open anytime throughout the year.